jump in and take a look at our opening hands here. We got Reed Duke up at the top of your screen and Gab Nassif down at the bottom, both on Team CFB and both looking to get as close as they can to Seth Manfield on top of the rankings. So Reed Duke happy with his opening hand. Gab Nassif taking a look at a Clarion Spirit Elite Spell bind a Bone Crusher Giant and Edgewell Innkeeper. I mean, what more could you want than that? Yeah, this is definitely a keep. Nassif is just thinking about what card to put back from the mulligan. And I love that Reed just kind of snapped off that one lander on the draw. We do have just <laughs> Ferris Sentinel and two innkeepers. So if you do draw a land, this hand is quite unreal. And you even have the giant killer to be able to just play it just to make yeah. sure you hit your land drop. So a pretty nice hand. Some people might think like the one lander is a little bit risky, uh, but with the the texture of the hand, it's actually uh, quite, a, quite a strong hand. Yeah, just fair Sentinel's been an MVP in quite a lot of these night adventure matches, but it does die to stomp. So <laughs> Reed Duke's going to have to get lucky there and does find a Needle Verge pathway. So finds the second land, doesn't have to rely solely on the Sentinel as this game gets underway. Follow up land here for Nassif is going to be the Timber Crown pathway, and he'll pass the turn back, holding up the Bone Crusher Giant and stomp. You know, I have to say, I think we see Gabriel Nassif and Reed Duke as our first feature match, like just about every league weekend here. As these two <laughs> players have always been in the same pod together and have both been so close to taking to locking up one of these world spots, but just barely missing out. So impressive work by these two players. Oh, here's a nice little combination you can play with these cards mm -hmm. where you have Despair Sentinel down, Clarion Spirit hits the battlefield, and if it's not killed here, there'll be a follow-up play to get to generate a spirit token off of the second spell cost. So Gab Nassif, recognizing that, deals with the problem at hand and says, no thank you, Mr. Duke, no double spell for you. Yep, nice play there by Nassif. Not only would getting another creature onto the battlefield here be a little problematic, but these 1-1 one -one tokens with how Nassif's hand is set up just doesn't have a clean way to beat a board that's going that wide right now. Mm. So here's an interesting uh, decision point for Gab Nassif. Sees that there's no third land. There's two Edgewell Innkeepers. So is there a consideration to take the Bone Cry uh, Sorry, to take the uh, Giant Killer there? He opts to go for the Dranath Magistrate instead, but uh, maybe preventing Reed Duke from getting additional draws uh, could have been a consideration there. Yeah, definitely a consideration. And now Reed's hand is slightly awkward. You really want to deploy both innkeepers before you play this giant killer to really max out value here. But not bad here. But from Nassif's side, the decision to take Dranath Magistrate is just the product of this is one of the best cards in the mirror in the mirror. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's just so hard to play around that card once it's on the battlefield. You have to really think, can I use the non-creature side of all my adventure cards? cards it comes at a cost you might not be able to cast them so you lose out on value and th these mirror matches for the Nye adventures mirror matches are really about about value so it's hard yeah. to give that up in these matches the one thing about elite spellbinder is that the card you can still cast at a later stage so long as there's no dreadeth magistrate down yeah. but uh, nasif recognizing that if i want to get value off of the edgeville innkeeper i'm going to deploy the bone crusher giant now get that extra card draw before reed considers the dranith magistrate from exile exactly and that's why we saw nasif even just prioritized innkeeper over bone innkeeper and bone crusher might have been the best play but he almost didn't even think about it he's like i need to get my value now before dranith magistrate can be played on this turn now that reed has access to four mana um so a nice play there by nasif to just squeeze out every bit of value and the fact that nasif has done that makes reed consider costing what's in his hand instead of the Dranath Magistrate that's in exile, because currently exactly. he's not getting any value off of it. He doesn't know what's in the Thief's hands, so likely to see a Shodan of the Skulls here, perhaps? Definitely a possibility. Could go for, you know, the two green creatures as well. But yeah, oh, okay. decides to go with the four mana one three. Usually not the most powerful creature to be playing, but <laughs> a very strong ability in these mirrors. All right, so that'll shut off any future adventures. So perhaps pegging the fact that uh, Nassif may have a couple of adventure creatures in hand. So Giant Killer is just going to come down, no chopping down, no target on the board for Nassif to hit. And what will the follow-up play be here? Despair Sentinel is not really doing all that much for him right now. 
But yeah, another, I, another look in that hand to get rid of that showdown, that could be quite tasty. Yeah, I think that's what we're going to see here from Nassif. It's either that or put Gigante into your hand, which is not very exciting. When <laughs> Reed Duke is cranking out, you know, two, maybe three creatures a turn with that Clarion Spirit. And also, there's two Clarion Spirits in their main decks. And... Nassif's draw would have been pretty strong here at just kind of controlling Reed Duke's battlefield and flying over with elite spellbinders. But these clarion spirits making flyers is really just kind of brick walling Nassif. And it's going to be a tough thing to get past. Yeah, bit of a stalemate on this battlefield at the moment. Uh, Giant Killer can do an excellent job of either making attackers tapped or, uh, you know, just getting a couple of defenders out the way for the Flyers to get through. So we're just going to see Gigantha brought to hand and just bear a Sentinel down on the battlefield to fend off these Flyers. And uh, I think it's showdown time. Yeah, I think it's showdown o'clock. And I mean, Nassif was slightly punished for not elite spellbinding here because he could have taken this play off the table. And then all Reed has is just a couple of uh, green creatures to play, just bear a Sentinel innkeeper. But getting the big 5-5 five -five into play next turn and even having two extra mana thanks to Jaspera Sentinel to maybe tap something with Giant Killer, he took a, a higher priority on um, instead of just the Elite Spellbinder here. Yeah, so Reed Duke certainly setting himself up for a good couple of turns, especially being able to put all those counters onto creatures. And uh, here's a Lovestruck Beast for Gab Nassif. Unfortunately, won't be able to get the little Heart's Desire token down if he wants to maintain access to the Lovestruck Beast itself. Yeah, that's quite the cost. Would you like a 1-1 one, one, or would you like a 5-5 five, five that draws you a card? You only get one, unfortunately. <laughs> Ooh, We're going to go draw. for the 5-5. Five, five. Oh, it would be, if not for this lovely Dranath Magistrate. True, true. Even the How do you counters, deal with that card? It really is tough. Like, I wonder if Nassif will even consider playing Showdown just so you can either maybe find something to deal with the Dranath Magistrate. There's not much in the deck list that I'm seeing right now that can actually get that card off the battlefield in game one besides, like, mm. double stomp. That's, yeah, that's really that's all we got. Feels bad. So at this point, you've got to think, okay, all right, I'm not going to win via this massive showdown of the skulls that I'd like because of Dranath Magistrate preventing cards being cast off of it. So I'm just going to start swinging. I'm just going to try and kill you and uh, maybe use the Giant Killer to tap down the Aerial Defenders. But there's just so many of them because of that Clarion Spirit. So Elite Spellbinder is not going to get through. Yeah, and now it's interesting. So Nassif has the option to maybe play Elite Spellbinder, um, just tap something down with Giant Killer, or play Showdown, realize that you can't cast any of the cards, but just use the ability, Chapter 2, Chapter mm -hmm. 3, and then just next turn when you play Spellbinder, let's say you can put a counter on your other Elite Spellbinder and start attacking into yeah. Clarion Spirits. That's kind of the only way I can see that Nassif can kind of gain an edge here and maybe get back into this game because everything is coming up Reed Duke right now. Reed has this Clarion Spirit engine going on. He has Dranath Magistrate to shut down Nassif and he has Showdown where he can cast all the cards. So it is all coming up Reed Duke so far. <laughs> yeah, very difficult situation here for Gavin Nassif. Just weighing his options, seeing what the best way forward is here. First things first, let's get this land down on the battlefield. It's going to be Needle Verge Pathway into the Showdown of the Skulls, like you mentioned, Corey. And uh, yeah, let's just start trying to pump up the Flyers, perhaps. See if we can uh, eke through some damage that way. Yeah, a nice Showdown there. If we could cast them, that would have been a, <laughs> a pretty strong hit, but... Man, this Dranath Magistrate is just so rude. Oh, such a good card. Such a good card against multiple decks. You know, it really shows mm -hmm. the power of it um, being able to be played on the in the main deck for both of these players, you know, doing some good work against Sultai Ultimatum, mm -hmm. uh, shutting down all the adventure cards, which is in many decks, you know, is it Tempo? Oh, yeah. The is it Dragon's deck? We have all these adventure decks of all different varieties that it's shutting down. And, you know, I mean, it, it's there's not many decks where it really doesn't hit. Yeah, it's, it's not like it's a, oh, this is a dead card in this matchup, especially not against the top decks in the meta. It's going to annoy most players this weekend, and it's proving to do exactly that here for Gab Nassif. 
Exactly, because normally a two mana one three that's only the ability is only good in a couple of matchups, not good enough for standard. That's mm -hmm. just not a high enough power level for look at all this value that's going on. You know, it, it's so hard to compete with that unless the ability is good against, let's say, 80, 90 percent of the decks, which it really is at the metagame as we stand. Yeah, I mean, just just look at the difference here. Being able to cast the adventure side of things as well as the creature has resulted in this incredibly wide battlefield. A couple mm -hmm. of counters here and there, and now Reed Duke is saying, okay, I'm going to start swinging. You've got a 3-1 in the air. I have a blocker, so I'm not scared of you. I'm going to hit you in the face for a fair chunk of damage now. Yep, it is definitely uh, Reed who did the the slow and steady, the the tortoise approach to this game. And Nassif is so far behind, <laughs> he's trying to really close it out and try to squeak out some kind of victory. But that that door is closing yeah, uh, quite quickly. Super fast. Yep. And just look at Reed's hand as well. He's got a follow up on the next turn with Clarence Spirit into an Angel Innkeeper, into something else potentially. It's a Redain on top of the library. So. Yeah. You know, that's it's just looking like an impossible game for Gab Nassif to win here. And, and it's interesting with, with Redain if Reed would have kept that, if he just actually plays the shield side of it. <laughs> Redain is not really that good in these mm -hmm. uh, uh, Nye Adventure mirror matches, but the shield could be quite annoying. Yeah, just like I'm going to, you know, negate one point of damage from each of your creatures. <laughs> and a lot of them are itty bitties. They're, they're small little guys. I like uh, I like that Nassif just picked up the creature, just be like, just in case, just to make sure I know how Dratoth Magistrate works. And he's like, yep, that's not allowing me to play that. I will <laughs> go on my way. We did see Nassif play the land out of there because that is not casting <laughs> Look at him. the spell. Yeah. <laughs> like, this isn't fair. I want this. Oh, man, I feel you. That's, that's just such an <laughs> unfortunate situation to be in, not being able to answer that one three yeah. But does have a very good draw on the Clarion Spirit, so we'll be able to start filling the air with little flyers too. Just depends what he wants to do next. Is he worried about what's in hand for Reed Duke? Is it Elite Spellbinder time? Or do I want to get the biggest creature, at least for now, down on the battlefield? Yeah. Cedric may have said earlier that we're not going to see Oko, but we still will see at least one elk hanging around, and that is our <laughs> Gigantas. It's okay. A 5 5 elk that taps for mana is much better than uh, a 3 3. So we'll take it. Oh, okay. Okay. Nice. I like Are it. You get, you get don't miss Oko, Ailey? Does anybody? <laughs> Come on. We all had fun <laughs> playing Oko. No. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right, so in for 10 damage there, the Bone Crusher, excuse me, the Love Struck Beast taken care of. And Turn passes back to Reed Duke, who finds another really good draw in Elite Spellbinder. Another big thing to get down on the battlefield. Yeah, and we're seeing Nassif kind of take that line that I expected him to try and also expected it to not really work with both of these Clarion Spirits. Mm -hmm. I've just tried to beef up this Elite Spellbinder so it can actually attack into these Spirits. There's just too many of them. You know, there is just too many of them, and Nassif is not going to have the value to deal with all of them and get those last few points of damage over. We don't have anything like Embercleave in the list that is mm -mm. one of those over-the-top effects. All these Nye Adventure decks just really try to edge you out with card advantage. They're, you never see these games where it's like, oh, I had that absolutely perfect draw where you know it culminated in an Embercleave on turn five and they died. It's like, no. Yeah. I went nine turns, I cast an adventure card and drew on an average of three cards a turn every single game, and eventually my opponent conceded out of, you know, annoyance that they can't deal with all my permanents. <laughs> well, we are seeing damage being thrown across the uh, the battlefield here, at least getting in with those little spirit, I say little spirit tokens. They're quite large at this point, courtesy yeah. of Shadow of the Skulls. And uh, here we're going to see Edgewell Innkeeper as the final play for Reed Duke's turn. Edgewell Innkeeper drawn here for Nassif, but nothing to follow it up with just yet. Will we see him hold on to that just to get another spirit off of the Clarion spirit? Yeah, I think we can just play it now because we can also yeah. just play this Elite Spellbinder to get one of these spirits, and then you at least get some value out of the showdown. Um, but at this point, it's just... I mean, look at Reed Duke's battlefield. It's yeah. There's so many things, it's getting smaller and harder to see. That's when you know you're pretty wildly ahead. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what is this, a battlefield for ants? Yes. Yeah. yeah, an elite spellbinder yeah. can't be cost at the moment. Of course, because of, magist of magistrate, of course. Oh, magistrate. <laughs> what a nuisance you are. 
Yeah, and honestly, this game really looked like it was decided by Dranath Magistrate, and it was definitely a good push. It hasn't done the most uh, in this game. It's definitely been a, a big inconvenience, and then it shut down Showdown, which was huge. But mm -hmm. Reed just had a great draw, too, where he didn't really fizzle out and had all these innkeepers that actually triggered. Nasib yeah. drew the innkeepers a little late. I mean, he drew like maybe one, two cards off these adventure cards. And, and that's the key cards we're going to be seeing for um, the last one to two games between these two Hall of Famers. Yeah, and you mentioned that there's no over-the-top effects with this Naya deck. There's no Embercleave. Mm -hmm. There's no Goldspan Dragon that you're pumping up and then unleashing Fury on it. Nothing like that. Yes. So it's just going to be a, a case of, all right, I'm going to throw my big creature at you. How do you choose to block? Okay, cool. Chump block. Fine. All right, your go. What you going to do? Yeah. And, oh, and would you like three extra cards? Sure. Why not? <laughs> why not? Love struck Beast. Oy. Three mana, five, five, draw three. Not bad. Seems good. Yeah, Not yeah. bad. And make two one ones. <laughs> and even what three do we find? with the with the heart's desire. That's a that's a good magic card right there. <laughs> oh my goodness! Two more elite spell binders and a tangled floor hedron off the top it would have been absolutely nutty to find another adventure creature. You know, at this point, you're kind of hoping that you'll find a giant killer to take out some of these big creatures yeah. that are that are flying in here. Yeah, normally Giant Killer does not have great targets. You can you can hit mm. Lovestruck Beast, you can hit Bone Crusher Giant, but outside of that, you don't have any reliable targets. But with Showdown, it creates a lot of reliable targets. So it, it's something that you know I'm sure we'll even see um, Nasif and Duke probably keep in most, maybe all, um, or at least some number of them. Yeah. We see a trade there with a couple of Reach creatures and the Elite Spellbinder gone from this side, but Nasif doesn't have any more flying blockers, so that would just be an all-out swing and a win, you have to think, from Reed Duke's side of things. Yeah, this one looked over. All right, so MVP of that game, definitely Dranath Magistrate. So let's yeah. take a look at the sideboarding here. What do you think is going to be the difference maker in this mirror match? Well, I think they... Uh they recognized a hole in these adventure decks because they agreed that, you know what, we're going to play four Dranath Magistrates in the 75. It's something that I, I don't think I've ever seen that as a four of until this league weekend, but just showing how hard it is to kill in these uh, Nay Adventure mirror matches with Bone Crusher Giant not hitting it, you know, Giant Killer not hitting it. You have to bring in some Fire Prophecies and Glass Caskets to be able to deal with it, which is what we see them do. So Slightly different sideboarding, um, I'm guessing play draw differences. Some of these amazing Hall of Fame players, when you have sideboard meetings and you talk about what's <laughs> coming in, what's coming out, there's usually two categories, play and draw make a big difference if you want to be pushing the aggression or if you want to be reacting to your opponent a little more. And uh, we see that Nassif uh, has a little bit more removal, trying to react a little bit more, taking out that Jaspera Sentinel instead, not trying to be an explosive deck, but a reactive deck. Yeah, and that's what you expect to see when he's on the draw. So yeah. Gab Nassif will be on the play here, looking to tie things up here with his teammate, Reed Duke. We took the first game in rather convincing fashion. I don't think there was any point where we thought, okay, maybe Gab has a chance here. It's just kind of like as soon as that uh, that uh, Dranth Magistrate came down, you're like, okay, there's not many ways he can deal with this right now, so. Yeah, I think it was the opening hand, Ailey, was where I was like, all right, Nassif has a chance. If Reed does not draw that second land, mm. it's over. But yeah, a couple turns later, uh, and a Dranath Magistrate on turn four was enough <laughs> to pester Nassif's showdowns and, and lock up a win. Yeah. And you could even see from that decision from Nassif to exile the Magistrate, he knew how much of a pain that card would be to his game plan, how much it would hinder it. So... Let's see how this game shakes out here between these players. Kicking things off there with a Lovestruck Beast's Heart's Desire apiece and swinging in there for one point of damage. And a nice little reactive hand from Reed, which is basically exactly what you want when you're on the draw. You want to kill something on, tur on turn two, probably kill something on turn three. You know, ideally, like, innkeeper into a an adventure creature on turn four. We're not quite there yet, but we got the first pieces of the puzzle. Uh, and that's the important thing. You got to make sure Nassif doesn't have these ridiculous, you know, 
love struck beast into double edge wall innkeeper than love struck beast draws you got to be able to beat those kind of draws or it's just kind of over yeah so no one's getting off to an absolutely crazy start right now we have interaction in hands though and we have a very very good turn four for gab nasif when it gets to that with double showdown of the skulls being able to chain together showdowns is there's there's not in terms of an Aya deck, there's not a nicer feeling. It's just yeah. so, so gross with the amount of counters yeah. you can put down. I absolutely love Showdown. I'm a huge fan of that card, but, you know, my favorite thing to do is go Showdown and then cast your favorite card, Ailey, Yorian, uh, afterwards. Uh, no. Blink it out and get some more cards. I mean, come uh, on. What, how can you say no to I that? I mean, that's pretty good. That, that, that's pretty good. <laughs> I won't lie. <laughs> Big draw there for Nassif getting land number four. Mm -hmm. Showdown, it is a four drop, but most of the time you're going to see these players cast it on turn five mm -hmm. because that is just a way to, you know, get, get value, get the most amount of value from your cards. And when you play it on turn four and let's say you see two to three lands, you're only being, you're only able to play one of those lands on turn five mm -hmm. and you end up losing a bit of value. Now, if you have no other play, it's kind of an easy, yeah, I'm going to play showdown. Um, but we're going to see it a lot over the weekend where players are going to play that on turn five um, if they have the time to do so. For sure. So decision there between Gigantha to hand or the Love Struck Beast decides to go for the Love Struck Beast just in case of a certain Drenith Magistrate being in the hand there for Nye Adventures. Yeah. Excuse me, for uh, for Reed Duke. Mm -hmm. Rocking the good old Nye Adventures as we see the turn just pass back. Going to hold up mana and uh, Giant Killer ready and waiting for a one drop to turn on the Lovestruck Beast's attack. Yeah. And I want to bring some attention to that decision Nasif was thinking about, was thinking about just putting Gigantha in hand instead of playing Lovestruck Beast. And normally you think like, well, you just want to play your card, right? Especially if you're going to play Showdown, then you can start putting counters on it, especially that first spell. But Nasif was kind of worried about exactly what's kind of happening. Reed Duke just has a very heavy removal-based hand, removal based hand and doesn't want to just play a creature into a removal spell where Reed maybe wouldn't do anything the next turn um, if you didn't play a creature. I think I still like the Lovestruck Beast just in case if they don't have the removal spell. Um, and especially if they don't have the removal spell, we see the Bone Crusher Giant face up that Reed just could have played. So I think that's why Nasif thought otherwise. Um, but yeah. if that Bone Crusher wasn't there, we definitely might have saw Gigantha just go to hand to play around it. Shout out the Skulls hits the battlefield, and Giant Killer is going to take care of that Love Struck Beast. So, no creature to put the first counter on for Gab Nassif. What is Reed Duke's follow up going to be here? Yeah, a lot of options. It seems like this is one of the turns where, similar to the other game, but reversed, where Nassif felt the pressure to go fast because. Um, because Reed Duke was casting all these cards, had so much more value. You know, we're going to see Reed that's going to need to start putting the pedal to the metal a little bit and start getting a little aggressive. So with all these showdowns, Nassif is going to have the more, is going to have more value here and is going to take over the game if given the right amount of time. Quite a few options here now for Nassif as Chapter 2 has triggered. As obviously the three cards in hand that will disappear after this turn, so would likely prioritize those. Just the Tangled Florahedron and the Glass Casket in hand, which isn't, they're not really like pivotal cards at the moment. They'll come into play a little bit later, no doubt, but first things first, let's get the land down, Needlebridge pathway on the battlefield. Now, what do we want to start putting counters on? Maybe that's what Nassif's thinking about. Yeah, what we're going to see more than likely is the first spell cast from Nassif is going to be a creature, so you can gain some value off that. I wouldn't be too shocked to see Despair Sentinel and Bone Crusher Giant or Stomp being played. I would think you just want the creature here, but we'll see what Nassif does. But you don't want to lose out on that. Glass Casket in the, um, in the Exile Zone, just really no way around that. Reed Duke... Uh, correctly just didn't play a creature. If you play a creature into that, you're just, it's a free removal spell for Nassif. So Reed chose to just try to remove a creature and then play creatures next turn when there's not a glass casket face up that's going to be exiled. 
Pretty nice reaction here or response from Reed Duke, being able to take care of both of these creatures so that no counters end up staying on Gavnessy's board. We do see the Fire Prophecy in hand there. So what we'll likely see the next turn is in response to whatever Gavnessy is casting, that Fire Prophecy taking care of the Sentinel. Yep, absolute possibility here. Now this is one of those turns where we don't have a face-up removal spell from Gabriel Nassif, like the Glass Casket. So now I wouldn't be too shocked to see um, actually playing to the battlefield as well as removing a Jaspera Sentinel. He just really got to get something going, um, <laughs> especially before we see this second showdown. Reed Duke's really going to feel the pressure if uh, Nassif goes for that next turn. Luckily, he's had an answer to basically everything that Nassif's done on yep. his side of the battlefield, though. So... Now he's like, okay, cool. I've dealt with your stuff. You're not going to get any counters off the creatures. Well, hopefully not. Hopefully you don't have two things to cast here. But uh, the battlefield is now in in control of Reed Duke. You know, we just have a Bone Crusher Giant down. And Gab Nassif has to deal with this. He does have the answer in the Glass Casket. But now it's an interesting decision of whether or not he wants to run out the second showdown or deal with the threat at hand. Yep, Reed Duke uh, has done a great job this game of just maximizing his removal spells and maximizing his resources to keep up with Nassif, who has drawn more cards. Even with the mulligan showdown, just unmulligans you three times <laughs> over. It, it's such a powerful card um, that Nassif or Reed Duke has really played quite well to make sure that he is at least at parity with Nassif here. Whoa, Ooh, hello. Keep that on the top, please. Yes, indeed. <laughs> okay. Cool, Dranath Magistrate's going to make an appearance here as we'll see Tangled Florahedron down on the battlefield alongside the Gigantha being brought to hand. So no counters for Gab Nassif. He won't be too mad about that, though. Passes the turn back to Reed Duke, who finds a Red Cap Melee. Quite a good draw here. You know, this you really feel like Red Cap Melee is being pointed at Torbrin and Annexes and <laughs> Robbers of the Rich, right? But that's not the only mode. That's just the only mo mode that doesn't lose you a land. You can yeah. hit, let's say, a Dranath Magistrate, a card that is going to give you a ton of problems. <laughs> For the price of one land, I am all about that discounted rate right there to be able to oh, cast yeah. all my spells. I think that's a fair trade, yes. considering what the Magistrate could do to your game plan. <laughs> And I mean, we'll see, like, Reed Duke might not want to cast all these giant killers yet. Like, we do not have an innkeeper, and that is a big deal. Maybe we'll see them both played here, or maybe we'll see them wait for the value, but it feels kind of bad to play all of them and then draw Edgewall innkeeper next turn. So that's why <laughs> we're seeing the pause here from Reed Duke. Playing one of them is pretty sweet, because then... Reed at least has something to do with his mana, and it plays mm -hmm. around Jonathan Magistrate if he doesn't want to use Red Cap Melee, but it feels bad a little bit. Yeah, it is It is kind of like, it's like, oh, look at all the things I could have. But yeah. at the same time, you know, these players are some of the best in the world, and they know that going for the greedy play will punish you most of the time. Sometimes it pays out. Sometimes it pays off for you. But <laughs> yeah, other times it's just, okay, what's the sensible thing to do? Let's do that. Ah, you just gotta, you just gotta for, go for the greed all the time, Ailey. You know, <laughs> nothing bad will ever happen. Just You've heard it here call. first, friends. Just go for greed. <laughs> greed is good. Ooh, <laughs> Ooh a that's second. a very good showdown. Yeah, a second Dranath Magistrate is is pretty tempting here. Like right now, Reed Duke doesn't have the showdown, doesn't have anything as an adventure zone. So we'll see, uh, you know, I'd be kind of shocked if Nassif just goes double Magistrate, but just having two of them for the long game seems mm -hmm. quite powerful. And who knows, he might even just jam both of them now. It's just that good of a card. Yeah. If not, why not? Yeah. So let's say Reed Duke's hand right now is... Glass Casket, Showdown of the Skulls, right? Like, Nassif doesn't know what Reed Duke's hand is. Then it's pretty tempting to not just slam both Magistrates, because then you're stopping a draw four. We yeah. know that Reed is not drawing uh, nearly that well, but uh, <laughs> it, it could have been. Yeah, it would have been a real feels bad if there was an edge and keep it drawn at the top, but... Oh. Uh... You have Nassif also holding up the stump for the 1-1. One -one. That's going to shut off the Lovestruck Beast, so that won't get in for any points of damage. So it's just the Bone Crusher Giant and the 1-2s that can swing in here if they so choose. Yep. Uh, 
Gabriel Nassif just recognizing as long as my life total doesn't get hit severely hard, he has more cards. He has more value off these chapter two, chapter three of the showdowns. Mm -hmm. He's likely to win the game as long as he doesn't get hit really hard. Like let's say for nine here with love struck and bone crusher. So a really nice play dealing with the one, one in combat before it can attack. And Reed saw that play being face up. There was just nothing he could do about it. If he had a tangled floor, hedron or a one, one or something, he could play around that and then the game gets very tough for Nassif so that was mm. a big turn of reprieve um if you're a Nassif fan if you're a yellow hat fan <laughs> well, here is going to be a really nice little play here for Nassif going to get that counter on the existing Drenith Magistrate and follow up here with an edge wall innkeeper into bone crusher giant Drenith Magistrates are going to share the counters so red cap melee can take care of one of them, but not both. Is there any consideration okay. here just to red cap melee away the card draw engine? Where do it, we go from here for Reed? Yeah, it's tough. Like right there was Reed's chance to red cap melee one of the magistrate. But right now without a second removal spell, it doesn't really do anything. Mm. Just dealing with one of that effect, <laughs> the other one's still there to cause you grief. The one <laughs> thing I think we will see from Nasif though is stop at three fives would be yeah. my guess here. Just to make sure you play around giant killer, a three five or a 3-4, like we see Gala the Zeth Prismari in these Is It Dragon decks, they're yeah. not that perfect power and toughness right now in the metagame where they do not die to Stomp and they do not die to Giant Killer. And with adventures being as prevalent as they are, it's a really tough yeah. power and toughness to deal with, which is, you know, kind of a weird power and toughness to be, <laughs> you know, a really powerful and standard. Usually just the bigger the better, but... This one Never mind the fact it. that it's flying as well, you know? Yeah, you have to deal yeah. with this evasive thing. You can't stomp. You can't chop down. Yeah, Your Despair Sentinel's not going to kill it. Neither is your elite Spellbinder, so... Glass Casket <laughs> skips it. I mean, it, that one especially, especially is a tricky one to deal with. And is honestly the reason why that deck is still around, right? It doesn't gain as much value as we see these decks. You know, you don't draw as many cards, even though you're a blue deck, which is kind of strange over Magic's history, but <laughs> that's really why that deck uh, is really good on, also on the wings of Goldspan Dragon being an incredible Magic oh, card. Oh yeah, yeah, that card is just crazy. Yep. So we see both oh. of them to three, five here, and mm -hmm. I, I would assume that's where we stop. Glass yep. Casket's gonna come down here. In the first main phase for Nassif, who do we go after, though, in yeah. terms of what's going in the glass casket? What fits? <laughs> yeah, I like putting Bone Crusher to five power just in case that Lovestruck um, is able to attack. Then that's another creature you kind of have to tap down. Otherwise, it's just a trade with Lovestruck, uh, mm -hmm. and that can become a bit of a problem. Ooh, <laughs> this was huge. Oh, that's a good draw. Oh, so, man. In it. I mean, so one one line of play here that I am seeing at quick glance is you can a crow in war, steal an edge wall innkeeper, you can red cap melee the bone crusher giant without sacking a land, and you can also tap edge wall innkeeper. So right now Reed has on the table, this is the most aggressive line. I don't think he'll do this because it's not lethal, but yeah. that is nine damage. Putting Reed Duke to three, um, that is really leaving yourself incredibly wide open for a crackback swing that will be lethal. So I mm -hmm. don't think we're going to see it. I don't think we're going to see that extent. But stealing one of these innkeepers is already pretty decent and allows you to attack with, let's say, just Lovestruck Beast. Um, or, or maybe we just save that and we play Gigantha this turn. A lot of options for Reed. Oh, he's going for it. I like it. Here comes the Crow in War. We'll be able to steal one of these one ones, mm -hmm. takes care of that bone crusher giant with the red cap melee. And now we're able to swing in here for nine points of damage. You called it, Gory. It's aggressive yeah. and he likes it. I like it too. So the one thing he didn't do that he could have done as the max amount of aggression is tap the edge while innkeeper. Reed's just saying, you know what? If you want to so good five damage and throw away your other edge while innkeeper, mm -hmm. be my guest. That's just not that strong of a play. And it sets Reed up for um, during Nassif's turn to tap something and then untap, tap again. So yep. at this point, 
you know, Nassif is under a lot of pressure and could really use a big draw to go with this Giganta. Otherwise, a good a good draw from Reed Duke next turn could seal this as soon as next turn. Yeah. So critical decision here. Do we block it or do we take the nine points of damage? Going down to three seems like not a great not a great time. <laughs> not great, but it's not two. That is a very important yes. differentiator. I mean, if you take anything away from coverage today, three is not two, I think is probably the best lesson. <laughs> <laughs> Just because there's so many stomps. Stomp really yeah. makes it pretty brutal. Um, but taking that hit for five is <laughs> is really strong as well. And Nassif needed a good draw there. Unfortunately, didn't find it with that forest as that's going to be Fable Passage and Gigantha for his turn. But things are looking pretty dire here for Yellow Hat. Yeah, it really is. This turned around really quickly. And these Drenith Magistrates, as good as they were game one, haven't done anything so far, mm -hmm. just with how Reed Duke's hand has been set up. But changing into post board, you bring in Fire Prophecy, you bring in Glass Casket, you bring in Red Cap Melee, and you bring in the Akroan War. All of those deal with Drenith Magistrates. So it makes a lot of sense that this card is no longer the catch-all be-all like it is a game one. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So now the question is, where does this final counter go? Are we going to pump up the 1-1 one, one and potentially shut off a Bone Crusher Giant from attacking? Or does one of our Magistrates become a 4-6, being able to block everything on Reed Duke's side of the battlefield? It would also make it into the most obvious, here, tap this target. Yeah, exactly. Like, Giganta is going to be the first one to be tapped. And uh, the other magistrate's probably the second. The other option that Nassif had there um, was putting another counter on Tangled Florhedron so that if you tap one of the magistrates, you tap one of the Gigantas, at least you have a double block for a Lovestruck Beast and you mm -hmm. can actually kill it and only lose one creature. But the flip side of that is Chapter 3 of the Akroan War is going to kill every creature that has the same power as your toughness, you know, or more power, of course. Yeah. So these Dranath Magistrates are safe through that. Tangled Florhedron and Gigantha are not. Yeah, these uh, high toughness creatures are very good at protecting themselves from the Akroan Wars trigger. Yep. But both players are essentially out of options in terms of the cards in their hands. So they have to rely very heavily on what's in the battlefield right now. And just from a utility perspective, Reed Duke is miles ahead just having this giant killer able to tap down these blockers. Yeah, honestly, and we're seeing it right now. The biggest Ooh, thing, big draw. But big the biggest draw thing. Indeed. The biggest thing is chapter two of the Akroan War. Reed's like, I'll be patient this turn because for whatever reason, you're about to make a really bad attack, uh, Mr. <laughs> Yellow Hat. So yeah, we need something off this showdown. And that was a huge draw that could really flip this around. Well, let's see what showdown gives him. A land, Edrel Innkeeper, oh. Giant Killer, and Chop Down. All for the low, low price of one card. Turns out adventure cards are pretty good, Corey. Yeah, who would have guessed? Yeah, right here. And Reed <laughs> has the option and the mana to, well, that attack is forced. Nothing you can really do about that. But you can yeah. first clear the way from some blockers. So maybe there's not a lot of very good profitable trades, you know, like the 5-5 five, five love struck to a 3-5 Dranath Magistrate. Like that feels bad. I don't know how we're truly going to prevent all of that because there's two 5-5s. Five mm-hmm. But you can at least help out the problem a little bit and maybe stay alive here. Yeah, it's it's going to come down to what, you know, we're going to chop down one of the biggest creatures. Yep. That's pretty straightforward. Edgewell Innkeeper can join the battlefield off of one of these lands. What does it draw, though? What does he need to stay alive here? Um, I would think a Stomp, a Bone Crusher Giant is his best draw mm -hmm. here. Oh, Okay. I mean, that's probably second best. It's something you can cast. You know, yeah. that, that is very strong. Yeah, we're going to tap that for mana because otherwise it's just going right into combat to die. <laughs> Good call there, Nassif. And unfortunately, won't be able to use Gigantha's mana to cast the Love Struck Beast. Mm -hmm. So Gigantha, as well as the Magistrates, are swinging in here. Going for it. I love their enthusiasm, but it might be a little bit misplaced, friends. They have no choice, though. They just feel compelled to see battle. So on this battlefield right now, as it stands, uh, you know, Nassif or Reed can take whatever and, uh, you know, 
make the blocks that kill something. And then at end step, tap down one of the creatures. Mm -hmm. During his turn, tap down the other creature. Um, and then have one blocker from Nasif. And with the attackers as it stands right now, would only be six power if he got to attack with everything. Now, yeah. we need to remember that chapter three of the Akroan War is going to go off. It's going to kill some creatures of Nasif, but it's going to give back the one one that's allowing Lovestruck Beast to attack. Mm. So this is going to be really big. Reed needs something to help out with that love struck beast and doesn't even have lethal as it stands right now. Would have had lethal if it wasn't for that last love struck beast because you could tap down two creatures and if you find a one one you get to attack for nine with love struck and bone crusher. So Nasif just drew one of the very few sequences that could keep him alive through a top deck edge wall innkeeper or something. Yeah, so now his Love Struck Beast is unable to attack, so he needs to draw something to turn that back on. Yep. <sighs> I'm not sure what he can find here, though. And Nasif, or uh, Reed Duke made a great block there, blocking with the Edgewall Innkeeper. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it's just going to go back to Nasif's battlefield and does this tap before the Akroan War. Oh, there's a 1-1 one -one <laughs> to make sure we kill another creature. <laughs> wow. And that Very forces smart. a jump block. That was great. And finds a 1-1 one -one for the Love Struck Beast to attack. Oh man, this is looking very, very rough here for Gavin Steve at the moment. Yeah, what a what a great couple games, but this is going to be a tough one to come back from now if you're a Yellow Hat fan, but just great clean play from both players and just things coming up. Uh, read the Bones Dukes uh, as it stands. <laughs> I love that Reed Duke and his camera always has the most Jund style cards in, you know, that have ever been printed. Read the read the bones and Huntmaster of the Fells in the back. Reed, uh, <laughs> Reed loves what kind of decks he loves, that's for sure. Yeah, all the grindy mid-range ones, you love to see it. Oh, yeah. All right, so we got your Sparrow Sentinel. There's a Love Struck Beast. Now it's a question of, do I want to make my Love Struck Beast a 6-6? Six -six? Or my Jasper Sentinel, a 2-3. Yep, or Dranath Magistrate, a 5-6. It's really what you want to play around and what you think Duke is going to do next turn to tap something. Mm -hmm. And as it stands, it only gets to tap one thing. So we're not done quite yet, but we, we'll, we might see what we've been seeing from Reed Duke is attack for a turn, take a turn off, because then you tap something at end step, yeah. and then you tap something during your turn. And he's been kind of going by that template, uh, you know, thanks to the Crow and War as well, forcing the attack. That's a good turn to not attack as well. But if we don't draw anything of meaning from Reed Duke, I wouldn't be too shocked to see um, just a pass and double yeah. tap down with Giant Killer. And yeah, just being able to force through and, you know, force the blocks from Gab Nassif's side of things who has no other real choice but to get pushy here while he can. So in for six with the Dranith Magistrate, does Reed go down to five? I was like, he dies if he makes that attack because you just <laughs> take it, tap Love Struck Beast and go. I mean, maybe Nassif was saying, okay, I have to hope that, um, Nassif is thinking maybe I have to hope that Reed thinks there's something in my hand and yeah. doesn't make an attack or he loses <laughs> on the counter swing, but- Oh, ooh. showdown! off the top of the library you love to see it it's the final oh. showdown <laughs> <laughs> i think Is it honestly it might be the final one in the deck like i, I think that might have been number four oh I look at this off joke. oh what a great draw here we got edgewell innkeeper into giant killer with the chop down so love struck beast gets taken care of and an extra card gets to be drawn here for Gabna Seif. And we get counters from the previous showdown. So this is looking very, very promising for him right now. Never count out the man with the yellow hat. That's one thing I've learned, uh, you know, over my 15-year <laughs> career. <laughs> All right, let's see what we find here. Showdown is going to make everything chunky. It's a land. Ugh, land, come on. Get with the program here. We're looking for gas. I mean, we, we just got to... We just got a lot of gas that turn. Yeah. I think Nassif is okay that he got the land in that order instead of <laughs> land first and then showdown, because then the yes. game would be over. <laughs> yes, very much so. So uh, definitely the right ordering 
on the top of the library as the Drenth Magistrate gets in for six points of damage. That's not something you say very often. Yeah. And the one thing about this game, Ailey, is Reed Duke is thinking, okay, it's my turn for a showdown. Er, Draneth Magistrate is going to shut out that line. So Reed has to Ooh. play fair. Mm -hmm. And like his best draw he's hoping for is like a giant killer or something that he just gets to cast once. Reed's top decks are much worse than Nassif's when oh, you have Draneth Magistrate. Look at that. That's going to be lethal. Fire Prophecy being able to kill one thing, tapping down another thing, and swing all Sweet Chariot. Yeah, it's over. It's over. Unreal. This was an incredibly swinging game where we thought at some point Nasif couldn't win. Now Reed can't win. But ladies and gentlemen, we're heading to a game number three from these uh, top ranked MPL players. I wouldn't have it any other way. Heck no. Here we're going to yeah. see the giant killer tap down one of these attackers and Giant Killer in response going to tap down the only blocker. Here comes a swing with the team. But before we jump into game number three, my friends, Gabnasif only has six minutes to win it. So pressure is going to be on him. We're going to go to a very quick commercial break. But when we come back, we will have the decider between Reed Duke and Gabnasif. <laughs> Welcome back to the MTG League Weekend. It is the final MTG League Weekend for the season. It's Reed Duke versus Gavin Asif to kick things off, and both are at one game apiece. We're going to jump into the third game here to decide who is going to take the lead as both players are on 45 points. Corey, talk to us about, uh, talk to us about the sideboard decisions they've made for this one. Yeah, so I, it was interesting. I kind of thought this was a play draw difference that maybe they worked out as a team, but I think it's just an individual card preference um, that just Reed wants the one red cap melee uh, instead of the Jaspera Sentinel. And Nasif just would rather have that. Doesn't like the fact that you A, have to sack a land if you kill, um, let's say, Draneth Magistrate. And you know, B, it just doesn't kill everything, right? It doesn't yeah. take out Gigantha, it doesn't take out Lovestruck Beast. So I can kind of see both sides of the coin and we'll just see, you know, if it if it comes up, if it comes up at all for this. <laughs> now, I'm curious to see if a Crow in War will play another pivotal role in this matchup as both players yeah. take a look at their opening hands and that's a yikes for me there for Reed Duke. Yeah. No land into five lands. Ooh, boy. It's only fair though. Nasif Mulligan, the first two games, you know, you gotta even it out. They're gentlemen. They they like to they like to make it even no matter what. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Reed Duke's gonna kick things off there with the Heart's Desire. There's a glass casket on top. It's gonna be scried away there for the Temple of Abandonance. To the bottom of the library it goes, and Fabled Passage drawn off the top there for Reed Duke. Yep, and as we see in the bottom left-hand corner next to Nasif's name, he has twice as much time as he usually has going into game three, so <laughs> really, uh, really nothing to be uh, yeah. disappointed about. No, no worries here. He'll get it done. <laughs> I, d I don't think in all of the games I've covered of Gab Nasif, I don't think I've ever seen him time out. I don't think I've ever seen it either. I, it's always and, been, and, like, incredibly close. Even on his stream, you know, I, he yeah. plays a lot of modern. I love modern. I love to watch his stream a lot. I'm a subscriber. And even then where, you know, it seems a little easier to time out, um, you know, on Magic Online and modern, he still doesn't time out. So he's always in control. Yeah. It's just he likes a good old sweat. He's a master of the clock and the tension yeah. as he uh, <laughs> wants to keep us on the edge of our seats. Yeah. He's really just doing it for us. Of course. 
We we ask him to do this ahead of time. Yes, <laughs> just just take your time, Gab. It's all good. <laughs> Takes no time here though in dispatching this one one token, shutting off that love struck beast attack, and uh, it's going to pass the turn back here to Reed Duke. Ooh, who finds another attack enabler in the edge roll innkeeper. Kind of curious why he did it immediately there on his main phase. Seems like you could wait a little bit. I'm sure there's something I'm not thinking of that he's trying to play around. Um, but a, an interesting decision to not do it at instant speed. No land here for Gavin Seif, but has luckily found an Edgewall Innkeeper and mm -hmm. has two Jaspera Sentinels. This is quite gross to be able yeah. to cast this Love Struck Beast along with the Edgewall Innkeeper and hopefully find a land here. Can you do it? Yes, he can. Not bad. Yep. And we're kind of seeing a little bit of, uh, you know, having a lot of lands versus not having a lot of lands. Usually the person who is land light usually draws mm -hmm. out of it at some point where if you have far too many lands, eventually you just get caught up on and then you don't have as much gas in the tank to be able to keep going. Very timely draw here for Reed Duke finding that giant killer. So we'll be able to take care of the 5-5 five five that took so much to get on the battlefield in the first place. Yeah. Absolutely, and one one nice play I see at surface value, we'll see what we would do. Um, decides to fire Prophecy, but could have went Stomp on Lovestruck Beast, play Edge while Innkeeper and Giant Killer and get yep. a little bit of value. Um, is deciding a little bit more slow and steady approach. Maybe just wants to fire Prophecy and Stomp something or double fire Prophecy. It just shows that Reed is prioritizing removal here instead of trying mm -hmm. to get in there. Um, so that's a nice thing to kind of recognize that Reed wants to be on the control route a little bit um, for these first bits of the game. Yeah, and identifying how powerful the Edgewell Innkeeper can be, especially Definitely. with that Bone Crusher Giant in Exile. Yep, recognizing one card um, dealing with one big creature is not as valuable as taking out Innkeeper, which could just draw you more cards, and then it could be bigger creatures. Yep. So Gabin Seif was considering the Giant Killer there, but opts to go for the Bone Crusher Giant instead, get some extra chunkiness down on the battlefield and then follow it up with a glass casket to take care of the 5-5 five five on the opposite side of the battlefield. Interesting play here. Now Reed Duke is, is given with the option and opportunity to either fire prophecy, the one, one to shut down the love struck beast mm -hmm. or just giant killer, the love struck. I would think we see the stomp here, especially with the attack, just so that next turn Reed can get the value off giant killer by playing in Edgewall innkeeper, giant killer, draw a card and then fire prophecy, something else, maybe a bone crusher yeah. giant. And this way with that line, it eliminates both of the biggest creatures from the Seif. And Reed Duke just has to do that right now because he is very behind on board, obviously, here. Yeah. Turn passes back. Tangle Floored Hedron is the draw for turn. Gab Nassif is tapped out now, though, so Reed Duke will be able to deploy the Edgewell Innkeeper, followed up by the Giant Killer, and get value off of that. Finds a glass casket of his own. So that'll be a nice way to deal with Bone Crusher Giant and not take the damage from him. We're seeing a, a kind of a classic matchup in this mirror match where both players have great removal mm -hmm. um, and, and all it is right now is just kill every creature from each side, <laughs> make sure you don't gain any value. And something that really dictates the change of pace is who draws showdown first. Yeah. Uh, showdown would just be incredible from both players right now. Unfortunately, no showdown for Gavin. See, just finds a, I say just finds, a love struck beast, you know, <laughs> undoubtedly yeah. one of the best cards from the last, what's it now, two years in standard? Yeah, yeah honestly, it's been a format defining card uh, for the last two years since Throne came out. It's just mm -hmm. incredible. Four mana, make a 1-1, one, one, and a 5-5? Five, five? Like, incredible. Final thing we'll see Gab Nassif do is take care of that Edgewell Innkeeper. Fire Prophecy is alive and well there for Reed Duke, but opts not to fire it off on the end step. Goes to his draw, finds to spare a Sentinel. Not the gas he's looking for. Sure, it's creatures that can get in the way of the one ones, but uh, yeah, he's he's got to be hoping here for something bigger than that. Yep, not great to start it off. Now, the one thing Reed Duke does have going for him is to just tap down Lovestruck Beast, and then the attacks aren't great. 
Like, we'll mm-hmm. probably see a tap, and then Nassif has the option of attacking with everything and just fire promising Jaspera Sentinel. Yep. Maybe if he's feeling the clock pressure a little bit, you might get a little more aggressive at a spot you wouldn't normally. Uh, or you just play defensive, try to just keep setting up your battlefield and leave fire prophecy open. I think that's a pretty smart play. Yeah. The go wide approach with this deck is certainly beneficial, especially if you're able to find a showdown of the skulls to put counters on pretty much yeah. everything. You know, yeah. once or you get Clarion to that point, it's just, so yeah. As well. yeah. Yeah. Clarion spirit, especially those flyers, you know, this deck can get out of hand really quickly. It really can. We call it Value Town. I mean, uh, that's why Reed Duke probably <laughs> loves it. It's as close to Jund as you're going to get here in Standard. <laughs> Fire Prophecy is going to take care of Mr. Tappy himself in the Giant Killer. Will we see a Fire Prophecy in response? You know, an eye for an eye. <laughs> yeah, the big problem here with Reed Duke is there's not really a good Fire Prophecy target. Like, Giant Killer is a good target. Edgewell mm-hmm. Innkeeper is a good target. And then a 1-1 one, one is a good target if there's only one of them. But yeah. the fact that we have two of them, Lovestruck Beast is ready to, to wreak havoc here. Yep. He's going to do just that as uh, Gab Nassif sends forth half of his battlefield into battle. Yep. This screams to me that it's time for a 5-5 five, five Elk to be played with that other Jaspera Sentinel. And it, why attack with the 1-1s one, if Reed Duke has 1-2s? You don't want to yeah. ever give up this free value right now. So smart attack there uh, from Nassif. Yeah. And look at this uh, situation here. Gab Nassif has had multiple opportunities to cycle lands, well, essentially cycle lands with um, mm-hmm. Fire Prophecy, but has been perfectly fine just rocking out here with four lands and three Jaspera Sentinels. Yeah, yep. Um, Oof, and I mean, on the other just, hand, yeah, Reed is just the flooding. There. Oh. Oh, oh, no. Wow. It hurts us. Oh, that's awful. Oh, well, man. Anna Glass Casket. This is <laughs> very quickly going to be over at this rate because Gab Nassif is not fine. He's just finding gas off the top of the library here. Yep, 100%. And man, whoever on the pre show picked Nassif, I mean, that's just a really good call. Like, just a. <laughs> Great close match, but oh, it's really yeah, looking like it's yeah. gonna head that way. <laughs> <laughs> Don't mind, Mr. Baumeister, as he yeah, toots his own horn. Out. I'll see myself yeah. out. <laughs> <laughs> Here comes a big old swing down to three goes Reed Duke, but remember, friends, three is not two. Yeah. But it is not looking like a winning position here for Reed Duke, who finds a bone crusher giant. Does he have any way to win this right now? Yeah, this whole game was a like product. It. Was this whole game was a product of flood? Like both yep. players played excellent. Neither one of them drew a showdown, which would have been game breaking. Mm-hmm. But Nasif stopped at four lands, and Nasif doubled. It. I mean, and Reduke doubled it. You know, and that's really yep. all it came down to here. You know, great play on both parts, and uh, Nasif able to cross the finish line and get it done. Yeah, in rather impressive fashion too, drawing everything that he needed for this deck to go brrr, and it did exactly <laughs> do that. So congrats to Gab Nasif picks up. The win and gets one point ahead of his teammate, who is by no means out of it. There's still plenty of magic to play this weekend. So, you know, keep an eye on these players. Keep an eye on the top of the standings because it is going to be a showdown for the ages. You see what I did there? Uh Yeah, we're going to see these two players a ton, probably playing each other a little bit later. So if anyone wants to see these Titans go at it, we'll stay tuned. They're going to be up again, I I imagine. (laughs) <laughs> For now, my friends, we're going to take a very short commercial break. When we come back, we'll have plenty more magic. So don't go anywhere.
Welcome back to MTG League Weekend, everybody. I'm Ailey Loney, alongside Corey Dropping Bombs, Bowmaster. <laughs> and we are trying to, this weekend, determine who are going to get into the World Championships. There's everything to play for here. How are the gauntlets going to be decided? Who's going to be MPL? Who's going to be rivals? We'll find out by the end of tomorrow. But before then, there's still plenty of magic to happen. So, Corey, let's jump into this next match. Let's do it. I cannot wait. This first match was already awesome. I'm just excited to be watching Great Magic all weekend. Well, we're about to see some more of that with Yuta Takahashi rocking the cycling deck. A bit of an, a bit of a dark horse, I would say. No one, I think, expected yeah. this. Why do you think people are playing cycling this weekend? Yeah, we see, you know, a couple of players that play this pretty often. You know, Corey Burkhart, uh, you know, the, the more talented Corey B in Magic <laughs> plays this all the time. And there's a couple other players that really kind of have, have championed this style of deck, but it's never really been the most popular deck in a metagame until this Rivals League, um, just, you know, an astronomical amount of cycling. And yeah, it wouldn't have been my pick for the deck that is gonna be at the height of either one of the metagames, but still it's that very powerful plan of either get a Flourishing Fox down, um, get other, you know, get Pyromancer down and just start gaining value with cycling and probable lines to crank out some one ones and then just eventually win the game with a Zenith Flare. Uh, it, it still hasn't really changed how it, how it works because it kind of can't. You have to play all these cycling cards uh, from Ikoria, <laughs> but still just proving to be a powerful deck and, and decent against, you know, about half the metagame. So if you guess it right, cycling becomes incredible. All right, well, Yuta Takahashi is not going to have an easy time of it against his opponents in Luis Scott Vargas, rocking Naya Adventures, which we've just yep. seen in action with his teammates in Reed Duke and Gab Nassif. So if you have been with us since the beginning, you're quite familiar with how this works for the time being. But Corey, give us a quick refresher. Yep, this is uh, Nye Adventures, what we just saw, and I believe the exact 75. It seems almost identical. I wouldn't be too shocked if uh, Reed Duke and LSV were testing together, um, but just trying to gain a ton of value with all these adventure creatures, try to disrupt them a little bit with the lead spellbinders, and then go way over the top with Showdown. The one thing I'm seeing in the main deck, at least, is we don't have a lot of ways to just stop a Zenith Flare for 17. So <laughs> I, would, I would assume the, the advantage goes to the cycling players in these. All right, well, let's take a look here at their sideboarding decisions as we are going to join in game number two here. So very curious to see that, uh, well, not curious, I should say, but uh, Yuta Takahashi did win the first game. So cycling yeah. did what cycling wanted to do and uh, got the game one and done there as uh, we're going to go into game number two here. But let's talk about the, decide or the uh, sideboarding decisions here for both players. Yeah, sideboarding here, we're just seeing a good chunk of removal coming in from LSV. And then the one Soul Guide Lantern. Soul Guide Lantern is the one <laughs> card that's just amazing, right? Like getting rid of, lowering these Zenith Flare targets, you know, let's say in response to a Zenith Flare is excellent. But also just all, all Luis is trying to do is kind of cut off the legs from all these cycling creatures and make sure Yuta can't just go super wide um, with the plan for a bunch of creatures. And then just seeing a good chunk of removal coming in for Yuta as well. So we're going to see post-board games slow down a little bit as both players are trying to react to the other a little bit more effectively. All right. Well, let's jump into this game number two here. Let's see if let's Yuta can get the clean two or, or if Luis will be able to rally from behind. Opening hands here, not too shabby for both players. Luis is quite happy with that start. Going to use the Tangled Florahedron as a land. And, uh, ooh, there you go. Flourishing Fox is drawn there for Yusu Takahashi. So his game plan seems to be going quite well at this point. Yeah, not bad. We'll see if he even plays it. I, I don't know, because there's so much removal for turn one that sometimes you just want to get Improbable Alliance down first. Mm -hmm. And that's really the card that you can't really deal with uh, if you're an adventure deck, like you just kind of have to go wide on it. You just have to play bigger creatures so that Utah always has to be chump blocking and yeah. doesn't amass this absurd battlefield uh, in time to stop him from Zenith flaring um, and, and stuff like that. Some of that over the top effects that the cycling deck can do. Well, there we're going to see Improbable Alliance down on the battlefield, ready to start generating the one ones. And on the other side of things, Luis is setting up quite nicely here with a Jaspera Sentinel into a turn three showdown of the Skulls to just dig deeper into the deck and find more answers for the potential threats that Utah has. 
Here's a pretty fun and interesting thing that we see Luis do that we didn't see in the Reed Duke or Nassif matchup. Mm -hmm. Hustling out showdowns, right? Like usually (laughs) you want to just, you want to soak up all the value, play it when you can still play a land. And that is what the mirror matches are about, is soaking up every bit of value. That's not what this match is about anymore. This is about getting that down, getting creatures as large as possible, as quick as possible to try to win the game before Utah eventually takes control. LSB has to be the control or the aggro route in this matchup and recognizing that by playing a showdown as fast as humanly possible. Yeah, and now plenty of options, plenty of removal here for these creatures down on the battlefield. We want to take care of the 3-1 first and foremost so that there isn't an extra token to deal with every single turn as we now see that there are two token generators on the battlefield. Yep, and an, honestly an incredibly awkward showdown here for Luis though. The fact that He only gets to play one of the lands because he played it so much earlier, played the showdown as fast as possible, but also has a giant killer, which doesn't have any targets, Mm -hmm. has a red cap melee where you have plenty of targets, but it comes with one of your lands and it's turn four. (laughs) That's usually when you don't want to be sacrificing one of your own lands. (laughs) Not particularly, no. But it's still a spell that will go away if you don't. Yeah, I mean, you want to kill this Valiant Rescuer. It's it's just, there's just two much value that comes from that if it goes unchecked yeah 100 percent. so goodbye land catch you later it's all right we'll figure it out as we go and then we also had a choice if you're luis to just play fire prophecy clean out one of these tokens not really that valuable right now and giant killer would be going away if we do not cast it so smart for luis to still get the value while he can yeah and the one good thing about Luis's situation is that all these flyers that Yuta's is making, he will be able to create probably, you know, on a one for one basis if he draws well, a blocker in the air for those creatures. Yeah, absolutely. Clarion Spirit is pretty powerful in this matchup um, to just be able to stop that onslaught of fairies coming back from Utah. And um, yeah, the showdown is going to make just Luis's a little bit bigger, which is going to be a bit of a problem. Mm. Oh, he's in a flare. <laughs> Right row. One thing I love about uh, Yuta Takahashi as well is he was just so good at playing fairies back in modern. He was uh-huh. just playing this deck when everybody thought it was kind of not that good, maybe like two years ago. And I like that just any fairy he can play in standard, he's like, I, I got to play that. It's his favorite <laughs> deck. So. Nice. Yeah. I respect it. Fire Prophecy is going to take care of the second Valiant Rescuer. But not before it generates another token. Yeah, we're seeing the go wide effect here from Utah. But the go wide effect is a pretty good plan when you're still trading with things, right? Like if you're going wide with 1-1 fairies and you're blocking, let's say, elite spellbinders, you're blocking Mm -hmm. just Ferris Sentinel with two creatures and you're only trading one, it's fine. But that early showdown has made this really weird dynamic where look at this, this is three creatures for one token. And and this is where Yuta gets into a lot of trouble and it it just looks like it's gonna be too fast for Yuta to deal with. We, We see that Zenith flare looks like it's at five. Like, yep. Is that enough right now? I don't think so. Well, I mean, a couple more cycles. He's got blockers for days now with double yeah. improbable alliance on the battlefield. He's still got two cyclers, so he's got essentially one because Shredded Sails is cycling for two. Mm-hmm. But if we find a land, which he did, he'll be able to uh, cycle a boon of the wish giver as well. True. And I mean, let's say we get... We top deck a land, and then we get to cycle twice next turn. Or I guess we can even just cycle once. Fire a Zenith Flare for seven. Fire a Zenith Flare for maybe eight the turn after. Is that fast enough? Maybe. It's going to be It's gonna be close. Oh, man. If you're Luis, you've just got to be thinking, okay, just don't have Zenith Flare. Just don't have Zenith Flare. <laughs> yes. Because, what, that's... Four cards away, and then he's pretty much dead. <laughs> yeah, 10-10, ten, ten, uh, dealing 10 and dealing 10 is a very profitable way to uh, win a game of Magic, that's for sure. Yeah, that's what I've heard. Here comes <laughs> Glass Casket. Uh, taking a 1-1 token with a Glass Casket, when you could be grabbing things like, I don't know, a Love Struck Beast, is always a feels bad. But I love this yep. attack here from Luis. He's like, okay, I need a win. And I need to win fast. That's why we saw the turn three shot on the skulls. That's why we have as many counters on 
the flyers as we possibly can. We got to get in for damage here. And now it comes to a lot of math. And, you know, like, look at this double block on Jaspera Sentinel instead of Giant Killer. Recognizing that Utah, what that screams to me is Utah thinks I need to make sure all the reach and flyers that I can control on the battlefield are gone. Just in case, let's say I need to attack for three, attack for three, and then Zenith Flare, you know, for, for eight twice. And yeah. something like that. Trying to figure out if that line's possible or if, you know, Utah just has to go to the chump block already. Yeah, it's going to take <laughs> oh, so much Crunch. damage. <laughs> Down to one. He is playing with fire here. Draws a pyromancer and is now literally playing with fire if he chooses to cast that first. But instead goes for the cycle and is going to go to town with Luis's face. Oh, no, yep. going to get the 5-5 five five down first. Seven life gained. That's when you know you're behind if yeah, you're yeah, playing you're the cycling deck. <laughs> is when you're like, I have to deal with these big creatures first. It's not the time to just be like, okay, chump block, chump block, chump block, flare, flare, you to the face. Right now, Utah is thinking, okay, I just need to try to still be in the phase where he's trying to control the battlefield. So now yeah. I wouldn't be too shocked if he like takes that 4-4, right? If doesn't block the 4-4 mm -hmm. and is trying to just clear out tokens. Yeah, still decides to to do that and clear out one giant killer. Completely reasonable. Yeah. You know, for the most part, these tokens are expendable. They're there to chump block. If they can kill something while they're at it, then great. Yeah. And next turn with the Iron Crag Pyromancer, he'll be able to start picking off a bunch of creatures too with the cycles. Yeah. Ooh, or another oh. improbable alliance. Now Utah's got a decision. <laughs> this is a decision. The one thing we won't see from Utah is Pyromancer and improbable alliance. Mm -hmm. You really want to be gaining value absolutely every turn. So that Drana Stinger is going to the graveyard. I am I am very sure, pretty sure, I guess Utah oh, could yeah. prove me wrong, but uh, that seems like step one. So I think right now Utah is just thinking, is Pyromancer dealing damage to something better than just another 1-1 one -one as another blocker? Yeah. Iron Crag yeah. Pyromance is going to hit the battlefield here, and we're going to see a cycle of Draneth Stinger. Probably the Clarion Spirit, but maybe the Edgewall Innkeeper. It's pretty yeah. close. Looks like he's considering the Edgewall Innkeeper here. Yeah. Just I, to I stop the card draw. Either. Yep. And at this point of the game, it's a lot tougher to double spell unless you draw an adventure mm -hmm. creature. So if you draw an adventure creature, you know, the Edgewall Innkeeper is going to gain some value. You know, yeah, so I, I thought that one's pretty close. I, I wasn't sure exactly what he was going to do there. And draws the land, so you get to play both. Excellent. Nice. All right, so Utah is setting himself up quite nicely here, but uh, Luis is not going to take the foot off the gas. Going to keep sending in as many creatures as he can realistically throw here at Utah and just try and get this game over with. Yeah, and this is scary. You look at You look at what Utah's board has done to Luis's. He's just taking, Utah's taking out one, two creatures a turn, you know, nothing crazy, and then just chump blocking to make sure he stays alive. But all of a sudden, this board is looking quite manageable from Utah's side. Like, we're still going to have to see some chump blockers, but we're still killing a creature and mm -hmm. only taking one here with a Zenith Flare to put you to at least 12. And at worst case, you kill a Lovestruck Beast but what Utah really wants now is just any cycler. You know, yeah. surprising from the cycling deck, I know. Yeah, yeah. But. <laughs> it turns out cycling in the cycling deck is kind of good. So what do we yep. find? It's a land, unfortunately. So now we have the option. Do you want to just activate Improbable Alliance? Or yep. is it Zenith Flare time? Oh, and that's so good. It's so good. Activating the Improbable Alliance here is just kind of screaming that, yeah, I feel ahead i feel yeah. enough ahead that i don't have to play zenith flare to make sure i live and yeah. similar to the last match you know where it was nigh adventures versus nigh adventures there's really no over the top thing like embercleave that you have to fear so you know these creatures are just going to attack like normal so if you can chump them that's all mm -hmm. you have to do yep and very heads up to kill the edgewall innkeeper because the next draw from luis mm -hmm. was a love struck beast yeah so that would have been an extra card, an extra potential threat to deal with. Yeah, you know Luis is sitting in his camera. He's like, oh, I'm never lucky. Never lucky. <laughs> <laughs> oh, very nice draw there in the giant killer for Utah. That'll be able to take care of one of the big five fives. But he's just like dismantling this battlefield from Luis. You thought, yeah, this is looking great right now, but 
out of nowhere, seemingly, just being able to cycle through so many cards and protect himself with these one ones. Yeah, you just <laughs> very much in this and very much in the driver's seat right now. Yep, absolutely. And at this point, with three improbable alliance, it's pretty probable now at this point. So I think we can change <laughs> the card name to that. But with improbable alliance on the battlefield, just making sure that no matter what, you're going to have a cycler and at worst, you're going to make three threes every single turn has really changed the dynamics of how you can play this cycling deck. Before, if you just run out of cyclers, you're dead. You're dead. You yeah. know, like if you brick for a couple of turns and you do nothing, the game just ends. But Improbable Alliance has really shifted that dynamic. Yeah, it's such a good card to have in this archetype because... Like you said, you know, sometimes you cycle into nothing. It's just thin air. But mm -hmm. having that improbable alliance and shaman on the battlefield ensures that you have a blocker, at least. You can draw cards if you flood. You know, it's a good yep. mana sink for you. Yeah, and then everything else that you draw is just, you know, kind of gravy, right? Like yeah. anything extra. You could draw just blanks, and you're still like, yeah, it's still not that bad. But yeah. drawing a giant killer, you're like, okay, now I got options. I'll still maybe just activate improbable alliance, but kind of has the world... Uh, at his fingertips. Yeah, and even at this point, he could consider starting to swing, you know, take care of that 4-4 in the air and use the giant killer the next turn to just tap stuff down. Mm -hmm. Yep, and here we go. When cycling is attacking, you know it's not a good sign for mm -hmm. Luis Scott Vargas here. And I guess all we wait for now is uh, another Zenith flare off the top of the library to see how much uh, Luis is going to get done for. But we won't even get the opportunity mm -hmm. as he sees the writing on the wall. And Yuta Takahashi with cycling is going to pick up the clean 2-0 there against Luis.